Hello, this is Mr. Stewart bringing you the 3.2 homework quiz uh, feedback. You're watching this video if you're just trying to prepare yourself to take the quiz or if you misunderstood something from the quiz uh, the first time through. Um, this quiz is all about distribution. Um, but it also is going to contain combining like terms. And so combining like terms all comes from chapter 3.1. And if you were struggling with chapter 3.1, then distribution is also going to be a struggle because really there's two steps to everything you're going to do here. You're going to distribute and then you're going to simplify the expression by combining. And so, you know, you may need to go back to chapter 3.1, review the videos, review the assignments and the quiz there before we're coming back to this one, uh, because everything we're doing here is going to build off of each other. So, uh, what you're... So the main thing you're going to be looking at here is two sets of expressions almost that are that are sort of going to be combined with some operation in between and a lot of times you're going to be looking at numbers outside of parentheses and the easiest way to, to combine these would be to be able to distribute first so let's make one up here let me just do something like two multiplied by the quantity of q plus 3, close parenthesis, and then there's going to be a, a negative right here, a negative 2 multiplied by the quantity of, oh, let's say, you know, 3q plus 8. I don't know, just kind of making it up but sort of basing it simi similarly to what you have here. So let's look at the first set, the first expression over here. You've got the quantity of q plus 3. The first thing I would do typically, you don't always have to do this, but I would always check to see inside the parentheses if there's anything I can combine first. It's just good practice. It'll make things simpler in the long run. If you can't combine anything here, which Q and 3, since I don't know what Q is, I can't combine it to 3, I can't add it to 3, then I'm just going to focus on distribution. And you got to remember what operation is happening here. 2 is being multiplied by the quantity, multiplied by the quantity of everything inside this parenthesis. Okay, so 2... Uh, basically what it's saying is, is whatever's inside this parenthesis, double it. Now you could think of it like this, I mean it's repeated addition if you want to think of it like this, q plus 3 and q plus 3, right? There's two of these, there's two of these sets here, but I think an easier way to just kind of visualize it or to think about it is just thinking, okay, what is 2 times this number and 2 times this number? Don't forget to include everything here. That's why they call it distribution because you're literally distributing this 2 multiplied by each term within the parentheses. So 2 times q is just 2q. So if I had q and I had twice as many q's, that means now I have 2 q's. And then 2 times a positive 3 is going to be a positive 6. Okay. So I've effectively distributed this 2 here. So this expression is now done. Now the most common error that a student is going to make is going to be right here. Okay, and here's here's the big deal. This negative here, a lot of a lot of kids are just going to focus on this two. They're going to want to distribute the two, distribute the two, and what's going to happen if you do this? So this is going to be wrong, but I'm going to show you what happens here. If you do this, you're going to say this negative is going to come down, and you've got two times three, which is six q, and then two times eight, which is a which is a positive sixteen. Oh. This negative 6q, that's fine, but this 
it shouldn't be a positive 16, it actually should be a negative 16, and then when it comes time to combine those terms, you're not going to be able to do it accurately because you forgot to bring in the negative. So what should happen instead is you should you should include this negative 2. You almost got to think of this expression that looks something like this. 2q plus 3 and a negative 2 multiplied by q plus 8. That's how you really need to think of this. Every single expression or term can be combined together, can be added together, and then just call this a term instead. That'll make things easier to work with and you'll actually get the correct answer. So if you think of this as a negative 2 being distributed in here, what is a negative 2 times 3q? Well, that means that's just going to be a, a negative 6q, which we had before, which is fine, but now watch, watch what happens when we take a negative 2 and multiply that by 8, a negative 2 multiplied by 8, a negative times a positive is a negative, and you're going to get a negative 16. Now, that is going to be different if you didn't include that negative and you would be trying to take a positive and a positive. At this point it's, it's time to combine like terms. So you've got a 2q, let's see, and a negative 6q. You've got a, let's see, let's get a different color here. You've got a, a, a positive 6 and a negative 16 and these are the terms that are alike. So uh, let's do the, the this first, so I do an, a 6 and a negative 16, and that's going to be a, a negative 10. And then I've got a 2q and a negative 6, and that's going to be a, a negative 4q. Now this expression has been simplified from something like this. So there's a huge benefit to doing such a thing especially when we get into chapter 3.3, which is all about solving for the unknown variable or, or you know, finding out what Q could be equal to when given an equation rather than just an expression. Like if I just said this is equal to 5, now we could actually figure out what Q is equal to. And simplifying things uh, from here down to here makes it a little bit easier. So again, if you're missing this, uh, then the, again, the, the, your most common error is probably going to be right here. Don't forget to distribute this negative 2 into both. So if you just did the positive 2 and ignored the negative, you're going to get an incorrect answer. Okay, Very similar question. Uh, this time, if you look at this, there's nothing to distribute here. Nothing to combine within the term, within the, I'm sorry, within the parenthesis. Nothing to combine within the parenthesis. You've got one, you got one, I'm sorry, we'll do this. You got one positive three to distribute first. So you would want to do that first, and then after you've distributed, don't forget to combine. Okay. So that's question number two. Question number three is probably going to be the one that's most missed. And here's why. At first glance, you look at this, nothing to combine, nothing to co distribute, nothing to combine, and some students would tell you there's nothing to distribute, but there is something to distribute. What's happening here is you've got yourself a group of numbers contained inside of a parenthesis that's 2 take away 2n. And this negative out here, what that negative is saying is, say, whatever is inside of this parenthesis, whatever is inside of this parenthesis, make it opposite. So everything becomes opposite within that. Until that parenthesis gets distributed in, you know, we, we really don't know what's going to happen here. So a, a good thing to remember is this. Outside of every single expression, uh, term, parenthesis, variable, there is always a 1 lingering around. For example, if I say here's y, I could also say here's a positive, here's 1y. Right? That's the same thing as just saying there's y. Or if I said here's 2 plus uh, 3n, 
Well, I could say that's the same thing as a 1 times 2 plus 3n. Does that change anything? Absolutely, it does not change anything. Uh, 1 times anything, it's always... 1 times this group is always going to be itself, 2 plus 3n. But see, this, this 1, this 1 can be thought of as a value, and it, it's helpful in some cases. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, when you're looking at this example, n plus 9, and then this negative 2 minus 2n, uh, you, really, you really could think of this as a negative 1 out front here. And this negative 1 can be distributed to make things opposite if you want to think about distribution. Or you could just think about the negative taking opposites. But what is a negative 1 times 2? Well, that's a negative 2. And what is a negative 1 times a negative times a negative 2n? Well, that, that just becomes a positive 2n. Just think a negative times a negative. Well, that's a positive. So now, does this look like something that you can combine as you're looking at terms. So this, again, this is going to be the one that's probably most missed. If you missed anything, this is the one. And the reason why is that negative. It throws a lot of students off. Okay. This one's a fill in the blank. Um, I, I would just be cautious to say that if things cancel out, uh, don't include the variable with it. That's really all I'm going to say with this one. Uh, is you've got yourself, this is just a distribution question. You've got yourself a negative 2x, a positive 4x, and a negative 2x. They all share the same variable to the same power, and so they all are terms that are alike. They can be combined, and so all you need to do is combine them. So I'm going to probably just leave you at that. Okay. At first glance, this one looks tricky. It does look tricky, but it's not tricky. I'm going to make up one that looks just as tricky and just solve it for you. So we'll just say 12e plus 20. Just, just kind of kind of making up something that's similar. Plus, let's see. I'll do one third multiplied by Let's do 9e minus 6, okay? Just something, I don't know, something very close to it, but just to kind of show you how it works without actually giving you the, the answer since this is a quiz. So again, you're looking at the inside and thinking, can I combine anything in these, in these parentheses, in these groups? And the answer is no. There are two terms, but they're not alike, so you can't combine them. So we're going to move outward, and we're going to look at the distribution. So we're going to think, okay, one-fourth distributed into 12e, and then one-fourth distributed into 20. Remember, the operation is multiplication. So really, what's really happening here is you're just taking one-fourth and multiplying it by 12e. And that's, that's actually not too difficult here. Um, then, then you're also taking one-fourth and multiplying it by 20. That's, that's it. And we already know how to do this. This is chapter 2. We should already know how to do this. This is chapter 2 as well with just a variable. But remember, whenever we're performing an operation of multiplication, we just focus on the coefficients. So the numbers and the coefficients. So what's 1 fourth times 12? Well, 1 fourth multiplied by, I'm sorry, yeah, 12 it's just the same as, you know, 1 fourth multiplied by 12 over 1. And, you know, the 4 is going to go into the 12 three times. And so you're going to be left with 3. And then the variable just comes comes down with it. So the coefficient becomes 3 and the variable becomes e. So 1 fourth multiplied by 12e is 3e. And then same thing here, 1 fourth times 20. No variable this time. Just 4 goes into 20 and even 5 times. And I think when you look at this the actual example... I think you'll discover that 1 6 multiplied by 12 e and 1 6 multiplied by 24 is going to give you some nice even numbers as well. So nothing to worry about there. And then coming over here, you just have to do the same thing. Look at the positive 1 3rd, and it's going to be distributed into 
9e, which means multiplied by 9e, and then one third multiplied by a negative 6. Don't forget, it's a negative. So watch what happens here. One third multiplied by 9e, um, and then and then one third multiplied by a negative 6. And here we go, taking the coefficients. Uh, multiplying the, by the number, so what's one third times nine? One third multiplied by nine is equal to well, how many times does three go into nine? Three times, right? So that becomes three e. That's a positive. And then, then you've just got yourself a one third multiplied by a negative six over one. Three can go into six twice, and an, a, a positive times a negative is always going to give you a negative answer. And so this becomes a negative 2. Well, so that comes down here. Now, that's made things a lot more simple for, for all of us. And so we just need to identify the terms that are alike, which is the e's uh, for 1, and then the, the numbers, the variables in this case, the, I'm sorry, the integers in this case. And so the integers, it would be a 5 plus a negative 2, a 5 take away 2, and you can think of that as a positive 3. And then you're going to look at the next one, the the, uh, the variables here. So a 3e and a 3, that's 6e. And so my answer on this case is 6e plus 3. So I just went from a really messy looking expression to something way more simple. And that's super nice. And you'll be able to do the same thing here on this side. If uh, you know, if you look at it carefully, just think: distribute in, distribute in. Don't forget negative, and and, and you just know it's just a fraction multiplied by a whole number. But we already know how to do that because of chapter two. We've worked on this already. So hopefully that's helpful. Make sure you evaluate it for yourself. Actually, interestingly enough. I got I got an answer right here. I don't know if that's the right answer, <laughs> but I got the same answer as as my my made up example. My made up example gave me the same answer as one of these here. But don't don't take that into consideration. That isn't true, or it may be true. I don't know if that's actually the right answer or not. But you'll just have to see for yourself. So anyway.